wanted to hop on here and quickly talk about something that has been bothering me within the writing community. I'm sure by now you've probably seen um, the hashtag going about on Twitter, hashtag end SARS or end SWAT. Uh, Essentially, um, SARS or the Special Anti-Robbery Squad is a unit of the already corrupt police system in Nigeria. They were set up in 1992 to handle violent crimes like kidnapping, armed robbery, and theft. Um, However, for years, SARS officers have been abusing their powers, harassing civilians, and extorting Nigerians with impunity. They have become known for their brutality, unlawful arrest, physical and sexual violence, assault, violent and unwarranted searches, extrajudicial killings, abductions, torture, extortion, intimidation, bribery, and other abuses of power. SARS has been specifically targeting people who look younger than 35, have smartphones, laptops, an expensive car, expensive clothing, tattoos, or piercings. They extort money from victims and in many cases arrest them for not complying to their demands. Um, They do not hesitate to beat, shoot at, and kill harmless Nigerians at the slightest provocation. They have no fear for law and they are ruthless and they believe they can't be stopped. So for a long time now, Nigerians have been calling for the disbanding of SARS, right? Things have gotten especially amped up over the past over the past couple of days, let's say about eight to ten days, where Nigerians have been marching peacefully and protesting to end SARS and demanding a complete restructuring and reformation of the police system in Nigeria. Back to the problem at hand, uh, Nigerians have been protesting peacefully and it's been a move that has caught a lot of attention the end SARS hashtag on Twitter many people have been talking about it many Nigerians have been raising awareness in you know in support of this movement now people in Nigeria are protesting in the streets they're marching they're taking a stand but those of us who are not in Nigeria we've been amplifying the protest digitally right so tweeting and SARS tweeting resources donating there will also be links in the description below to help Uh, A lot of people have lost their lives and families and loved ones to SARS brutality. And so there are many charities right now trying to raise funds to help these people. I will link those in the description. Please take a look. Any little thing you can do helps. So a lot of Nigerian youth, this is what we've been dealing with, especially those of us in diaspora. This is what we've been dealing with for the past couple of days. We've been talking about this, tweeting about this, raising awareness, doing everything we can. It's been an interesting journey. It's been difficult. But well, this is a fight that we have to we have to keep alive, right? Because it's a, essentially a fight for human rights. So, not only has the government resisted calls for eliminating the SARS police unit, but uh, throughout the past week, they've been attacking peaceful protesters using tear gas and high pressure water. Um, they've shot at protesters with live ammunition as well, and there have also been several deaths. It is a serious problem. Now, the protests are demanding a couple of things. You, you can search more information about this under the hashtag 5 for 5. The five points are the immediate release of all arrested protesters, justice for all deceased victims of police brutality, and appropriate compensation for their families, setting up an independent body to oversee the investigation and prosecution of all reports of police misconduct, and then in line with the new police act, psychological evaluation and retraining to be confirmed by an independent body of all disbanded SARS officers before they can get redeployed. Finally, the protesters are also demanding an increase of police salaries so that they are adequately compensated for protecting the lives and property of citizens. This is a serious issue. Police brutality is not a joke. Anywhere that we can raise our voice and any way that we can amplify this protest, I'm sure we all want to do it. This is a call to reform for all the police in Nigeria. So, why am I talking about this? And why? what does the BookTube community have to do with this? Well, with everything that has been going on this year, it's sort of been, there's sort of been a huge uptick in, you know, wanting more black books, right? More books representing the black identity. And it's sort of, it's sort of, I don't want to call it a trend because in my head, supporting black authors, supporting black creatives, Supporting black writers should not be a trend. It should just be a thing that everyone does. But this has meant an increase in the demand for black stories and black books and stories, especially in because I read a lot of fantasy 
especially a lot of African inspired fantasy, which is great. It's not a problem. That's good. What really got to me is that while people in Africa, in Nigeria specifically, are struggling, they're, they're, they're raising a voice, they're calling out for help, they're asking for an amplification of the protest that is going on to keep the, the hashtag trending, to make sure that this is not a moment, but it's it's a revolution that is happening to, you know, amplify voices and like garner support from wherever they can. A lot of writers, a lot of authors, black authors, are staying silent. That's fine. Okay, it's your platform. You can choose to use your platform however you want. That's not an issue for me. My issue is with those authors who specifically plundered African culture, Nigerian culture, to write books about police brutality and the struggle that Africans face. And they've made a career off of commodifying this struggle of commodifying the cultural identity of Nigeria, of Africa, and now they're being completely silent. It's, it's just, it seems very, I don't know, it seems very disingenuous to me to make a career profit off of the struggles of people, and then when it comes time to amplify the voices of those crying out for justice in that same struggle, you're completely silent. It doesn't take much. Just a tweet. Just acknowledge what is going on. You have a huge platform that reaches people in an international scale. You've profited. You've built your career off of this struggle, but you can't even amplify the voices. You can't even make a tweet. You wrote a book about police brutality using Nigerian culture for world building, but now you have nothing to say. That really rubbed me the wrong way. I'm trying not to get upset or to get too emotional about this because like I said, everybody has their platform and everybody wants to use their platform in a different way. Everybody gets to do that. Maybe these authors are actually doing something that the public is not aware of. But then again, this whole movement, keeping it alive, keeping it in the moment, Keeping it in the cultural zeitgeist is about helping to spread the word out there, to get people talking about it, to raise awareness, to help to get people to sign petitions, to acknowledge the struggle, and to add your voice and amplify the protests. That is what is going to keep it alive. It's just so disheartening to see all these people that when it comes time to plunder the culture, they will wear their dashikis and talk about jollof rice from dusk until dawn. Then they know that they are Nigerian. Then they know that they are African. But now when we need your voice, we need your platform, you're nowhere to be seen. It feels very disingenuous for me. It, it really does. It just sucks. It really just sucks. And this is something that we see a lot of the time. It's this thing of viewing Africa as just this commodity. And for me, that just feels very disheartening. While I'm trying to not get upset by the silence of a lot of these writers, because of course there might be other reasons that they're silent and you never know 100% what's going on. I'm just hoping and praying that it's because that they're taking some sort of action that we're not aware of. And if you wanna say it's because, oh yeah, they've been silent because they, they, they're trying to educate themselves and trying to get themselves to, to be fam more familiar with the situation. How much more familiar are you gonna get, especially when you wrote the book on the issue? How much more familiar do you need to be? Young people are out there marching in the streets, they're dying, and you can't even raise a word of support. You still need to educate yourself. How much more education do you need? It's been days. Many people are speaking out on this issue, but you, who have profited directly off of commodifying the African identity, you have nothing to say. It's just been really bothering me, and I thought I should, I should talk about it for a little bit. I hope things are going to change, and I hope these people speak out. But if they don't, and if somehow you come across this video, I will have some links in the description with information and links to donations and maybe a card or something like that. Anyway, thanks for listening.